How did the Enigma machine work? How did Alan Turing break the Enigma using the Bombay machine? In this series of videos, we explore the Enigma machine and the Bombay machine, which we have built from scratch in a virtual environment so that we can actually see them working inside out and understand every aspect of these incredible machines. Welcome to Ingenious! In the Second World War, Nazi Germany was occupying the mainland Europe at a staggering pace. At the heart of their military communications was an encryption device, which was a marvel of engineering. They called it the Enigma machine. Germans used the Enigma for all military communications. The Enigma machine was an encryption device invented by Arthur Scurbius in 1918. This machine was later adapted by the German military. So how was this machine used by the military? Let us say a message needs to be sent from Berlin to Munich. And the message is, A-P-P-L-E, Apple. Firstly, the Enigma machine is configured with the settings for that day. We will see in the later part of the video exactly how this configuration was done. These settings used to change every day, so you need to have the settings, a piece of paper circulated among the military with great care and security. Once the settings are entered in the machine, the message APPLE, Apple, is fed to an Enigma machine via the keyboard. The Enigma machine gives the encrypted message output, which in this case is JHKIP. So, APPLE, Apple is converted into JHKIP by the Enigma machine. The encrypted message is transmitted by radio waves. These radio waves are then picked up by receivers in Munich. To retrieve the original message, that is, to decrypt the message, Munich uses the exact same Enigma machine, with the exact same settings as was used in Berlin. The received message, JHKIP is fed to this machine via the keyboard and out comes the original message, APPLE, Apple. This completes the communication from Berlin to Munich. One thing to notice here is that, if someone were to intercept the radio waves, they would not know the real message without having the Enigma machine and, without having the settings sheet, for that day. Another interesting thing to notice is that, the same machine is used for encryption as well as decryption. We'll later see that this is actually one of the weaknesses of the Enigma machine that was exploited to break its code. More of that later. Now, let us have a closer look at the Enigma machine itself. There are four main parts. The rotors. The lamp board. The keyboard. And, the plug board. The keyboard, as you can guess, is used for typing in the message to be encrypted. The lamp board is an array of bulbs highlighting letters of the output message. This is where you read the encrypted message. The rotors and the plug board are used to input the settings of the Enigma machine. Now then, let us see Enigma in action, shall we? On the left of your screen is the Enigma machine that we have built in a virtual environment. The settings sheet is displayed on the right of your screen. First step is to configure the settings of the Enigma machine for the day. Let us pick up settings for 1st of June 1944, five days before the D-Day. That date corresponds to the first row of the settings table. The first setting talks about rotor positions. Let me show you how these settings are achieved. I'm going to move rotor 1 two times to reach the number 3. There you go. Now for the second rotor, move to 5. And, for the third rotor, keep it at 1. You will notice that these numbers can range from 1 to 26, number of alphabets. Now then, we have the rotor settings successfully configured. Next setting is for the plug board. In the plug board, one can connect two letters to each other using an electrical wire. So, let's do the first connection, which is A and E. I'm going to select A and connect it with E. Done. On to the next one. I with O. 
plugboard settings are complete. Now that the settings are done, we can encrypt a message. Let us send this weather forecast, weather is clear, Heil Hitler. We are going to use the keyboard for entering the message. I'll start with, W. We got, O, as output. Notice that the rotors move every time you enter an alphabet. Next one, E, converts to T. A, converts to H. Typing in the rest of the message. A fun fact about this process is that this was actually a two-person job in reality, one person for typing in the message on the keyboard, and another person noting down the letters of the encrypted message from the lampboard. And, we are done. We have the encrypted message. This message can now be transmitted via radio waves. Remember how we said that, the same Enigma machine is used at the receiving station for decryption. Let's try that. I've reset Enigma machine. Let me do the same settings we used for encryption. A connects to E. I connects to O. And, 351 for rotors. Now let us feed the received message to Enigma. Entering, O. We get W. Entering, T. We get E. Let us enter the rest of the received message. Voila! We got our original message back, weather is clear, Heil Hitler. Now that we have seen how Enigma was used for encrypted communication, are you excited to see how it worked? In the next video, we are going to see how Enigma machine worked by looking at each and every aspect of its electrical circuit design. If you think you have got some value from this video, do hit the subscribe button, so that you don't miss brand new content from Ingenious. See you in the next video.